today we're looking at a 99-04 Ford F-150 Lightning SVT model cluster. It has the Indiglo type lighting, EL lighting, and uh, we're going to show you how to replace the uh, inverter, inverter, converter, whatever the hell it is that that powers up that lighting circuit in the back, and uh, you're going to get the uh, the power up at the end of the video so stay tuned for that and you're going to get the uh, odometer, odometer repair. repair as well <laughs> yeah i don't remember what all we do with this one so uh stay tuned here's your video okay folks today we're working on a 99-04 ford lightning svt the uh problem with these clusters twofold your odometer will go out on you We'll cover that, but this guy's problem is his background lighting is out, which is a electroluminescent display that is powered by an inverter, and the inverter is notorious for going out on these. I'm going to show you how to get it fixed. And I gotta admit, I cheated on this. We've already had it apart. so good to see the uh, breakdown of the cluster there, so we wanted to show you that. Well, oh. my son Nick is helping me out. <laughs> I've taught him everything he knows, just haven't taught him everything I know. <laughs> Gotta keep a leg up on the kid. Say, kid, how old are you now? 26. 26. Uh, Not much in the kids' zone much anymore. Not child anymore, unfortunately. I've lost most of my youthful glow. <laughs> Not sure you had any youthful glow. <laughs> youthful, yes. Glow. Eh. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> All right. So as we took this apart, it's a little different in the back than your typical F-150s. It's got the uh, boost gauge, which is a mechanical gauge. And it's got the electroluminescent display that plugs in right there next to it. You just push that tab and pull the wiring out. At that point, you'll want to get your odometer display disconnected over here. And you should be able to pull this off. Okay. At this point, the board is not much different than a normal Ford board, a normal F-150 board. When we got this one apart, somebody had come in here. We got, don't forget this thing falls out. You will want to put it back in. Where did that look? Yeah, well, the rubber part to... also comes out, so make sure. Yeah, don't lose any of that. As we got this one apart, you can see down in here, it was all hot glued together because somebody had been in here prior to us. And as we take it apart here, this thing kind of fell out on us. Uh, it normally is mounted right here in this area. This one was kind of hot glued there and then this, it broke apart due to this thing overheating, this inverter overheating. And this is what is left of the housing. <laughs> Saved that for y'all so you can see how destructive that was and how hot it got. Alright, so this thing, will, this inverter, this old inverter will come out by unplugging here. And you can see real clearly how much heat was involved in the uh, destruction of this thing. All right, so the solution. At speedhut.com, I believe it is, mm -hmm. you can order this inverter. It is not a direct replacement inverter, but 
we can wire it up. It comes with its own dimmer switch. Rheostat. On this one, I've read the instructions and it says to just basically cut that dimmer switch off. So we're going to uh, wire this thing up in place of this thing. This thing has three inputs. I'd be lying to you if I told you what inputs were what. We have a plus, a minus, and then an un, uh, unmarked one over here on this point. So I'm not. I'm sure this is uh, battery positive, battery, battery negative, and then uh, some kind of data line. Yeah, probably something to tell this thing to, to dim up or down. So your outputs are AC and from the instructions it says that they are they can be hooked up to either or doesn't matter so let me go get what i've got instruction wise and we'll show you that all right so our instructions that we were were supplied by the customer actually he's the one that found the solution to this um, came with a picture but i have to apologize my printer is not uh it's out of blue, so we're or actually the blue is the blue is clogged, so uh, these colors aren't accurately represented. However, these wires are this wire, which terminates like this from the speed hut inverter. Apparently, we are going to snip off this rheostat and then wire in to this one uh, the black wire with the white trace is going to go well the solid black wire is going to go to the solid black wire and then the two wires I think are actually, combined into the black and I white think one. actually this side goes to the three and this side because this is the black and then the black one with a little white line here you go thinking you're smarter than me again you might be right though <laughs> <laughs> might help if they label them input and output yeah now, this came with a whole bunch of attachments because it's not meant for this cluster but uh, we are going to uh, try to make it work so yeah i think he might be right i guess if it doesn't work we'll just have to turn it around All right, so we'll go with that then. Yeah, because this is going to have to be the output side because this is what is intended to plug into their gauge sets. So this is the output side. You are correct, Nicholas. I can be smart sometimes. Every now and then, the sun shines on a dog's ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to guesstimate how much bar we need. Let's do a little more educated guess than this. On the output side, we are going to need just a very small. Where's the uh, oh, old inverter at? The old inverter's right here. Yeah. So let's just I use mean, that. We really don't a, need too much. Yeah. Let's just use that as a uh, gauge. Put a little bit more in case we need it. and do both of these at once. Nice. All right. So, the goal here is to get these stripped back and get those attached. Space here to get some shrink wrap on them. If we get two wires down this, let's we'll see here. No, um. Well, now what input do you have? <laughs> oh, okay. So, according to the diagram, it goes black and white to the three 
wire, which is this wire. This is the two wire one. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing that I can get by without you any day, huh? Uh, so, okay, so this one is going to come over here. I'm going to set these off right about here. All right, you're correct. I got turned around. We all do. What happens? Good thing I had a little supervision today. I'm afraid that's going to be a little too small. Too tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's not going to get. It's not going to be very forgiving. That gives a lot more room to play with. I get this one snip down. I hope I put some glasses on. You found my readers? Yeah. It says here on the diagram, it says the white wires are interchangeable. Right. Um, that might not be readable, but uh, yeah. for this one, it doesn't matter which one we connect to. We just have to connect them to each wire. Yeah, so. I have to imagine these wires were once white. Of course, you're going once aluminum white. to copper, so that's another little issue here. I'll have to excuse my extremely organized workbench. I'm sure that was Nick's fault. Uh, unironically, probably was. This side now is going to wire up to these three wires. Which colors were what now? Um, okay, Which ones so. are combined? I'm assuming the ground is going to be the uh, only one that's. Yes, yeah, basically the ground is the black one. Hot glue off of this. The uh, the yellow on our paper. The yellow is the green wire. Um, again, because of the blue on our printer. Um, so yellow's green, and the pink is the uh, well, bluish gray. Bluish gray or light gray. green or whatever the hell it is there. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna snip these. It's 
So the black is going by itself, and the other two are going together. So the, the two greenish cables are going together, and the black cable should go to its own. Together. So I need to heat get some heat shrink on there. I think that's probably good. So let's just put that down there. Get a couple of smaller ones down there. One thing to note, um, the person who put together the instructions uh, apparently was communicating with speedhut.com um, and confirmed that the, uh, the dimmer that comes in the, uh, in the Ford Lightning would uh, still work with even after splicing these two wires together. Um, and also, whoever developed this, I would be totally down with giving them credit, but I uh, tried to log on to the Facebook group where this information is posted, and they were a little snobby about letting me in their group, so I can't tell who it is that came up with these instructions. Well, to be fair, we don't own a Ford Lightning, so mm -hmm. it is a Ford Lightning Facebook group. <laughs> Not like we couldn't have figured this out on our own, but I would prefer to give the guy that deserves the credit some credit, but yeah, that didn't work out too good, did it? Let's see here. need to we can cut the uh, dimmer now to give you some more work room. Oh why make it less challenging Nick? Well you do need a challenge from time to time. <laughs> Keeps you on your toes. Keeps you fresh. Alright. I got a connection I'm happy with there. Snip off the excess. So we should be wired up correctly. That does not want to slide down over that because it got hot. Uh -oh. It's already started to show shrinky dink crap. Maybe if you bend the wire the other way. Oh. Yeah, I think it'll get worse because there's two wires on that side. Yeah. I was just thinking maybe you could, it, if it started sliding, it would have. Yeah. Let's get a razor blade if we can find one. Uh, there should be a razor blade. Uh, actually I can probably use this in the first here. Just try not to get the wire underneath it. Started shrinking.
going in there a little bit. Well, at least it didn't get hot. True. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bite the bullet. I'm going to leave a little play in this just in case we have to hook that back up. And I'll put a little shanky ink on that too. Get our hot air. Nothing ever goes as planned. Not with heat shrink at least. <laughs> Nothing like uh that fits tight, that's for damn sure. Probably just need to spit on it, but oh well. Let's just do use what we got. I just wanted to hold that thing together anyway, so. Just cut off most of the excess shrinker up here. I got a little happy with my shrinker up anyway. of this outer shrinker up was just to hold things together anyway so it's not a big loss it was basically to make it look pretty so maybe pretty's out the window so we'll go with functional Happy with functional? Absolutely. up here oh we didn't shrink wrap that one where we cut the real stud off oh, probably still hot be, yeah it's still hot enough I hope y'all are getting dizzy at this point. I am. I 
Okay. So back together here. We're gonna have to figure out some way of mounting that right there. Where the original was mounted. I don't like the way they hot glued the last one. So we're probably gonna do something different. Yeah, like super glue. <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, I don't know. Let me think on this for a minute and get back to you. Okay, I think I got an idea here. So this is what's left of the original bracket. I'm glad I didn't toss all that crap in the trash. But it was uh, broken off. The that's the original housing of that uh, OEM. inverter so we're gonna put that back and see if we can't get some instead of gluing directly to the face like they did if we mount this back in here and use Next wonderful idea of the super glue and glue the top of this to the top of that. We will still have it to where it is. Well, that figures. Another broke. Well, a little bit. I think once we apply the super glue, it'll all come back together. Ah! To answer the phone, we'll get back to you. Oh, yeah, back to what we were doing. I got my little nail polish brush, and I gotta tell you, I dig this super glue man because this is the best way, best applicator. I rarely ever come out with uh, my fingers stuck together. <laughs> now that I say that, I'll be stuck to this damn thing for life. I'm going to hold this here while it dries. You guys might want to go get a soda. <laughs> or a smoke break. Or whatever it is you do. Whatever makes you happy. A beer. I wouldn't say a glass of wine, but there ain't too many girls that watch this. I... Uh, I do look at my analytics from time to time, and <laughs> I think it's about 98.5% guys. Well, then, at least you know the women are there for your looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. What was that, 1.5%? <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. awesome. <laughs> Doing great, though. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not going to bore you all anymore. Well, I'll get back to you when it's dry. Okay, while we're waiting on that to dry, this thing came in from the Speed Hut, which is in Orem, Utah. And the part number on it was A-166. And that gets you this box. I believe it was $23. I did see there's a guy re repairing these things on eBay for 250 so he's probably mad at me right now <laughs> I mean this wasn't like the most beginner job at least no it's not it's not a total beginner job but it's something that if you've got a little bit of soldering skill and a little bit of patience and you can follow directions you can handle at home true absolutely so, and these clusters on eBay are running about, what were they, $399, $450, something like that. Well, I thought it was more. If you, yeah, and they're going to get harder and harder to find because that's, that is uh, a very rare cluster these days. So, 
drying time again. It hadn't finished drying. Okay, Nick was right again. Maybe I ought to keep him around every now and then. <laughs> These things are ranging from $660 on eBay to uh, up to $1,200. So, fixing them is the plan. Much cheaper. Much cheaper than replacing them. Drying time again. <laughs> okay, we found more to talk about. So, this should work on, uh, there's some Chryslers out there with EL lighting. And um, anything that has EL lighting, this should work. You know, if it works on this one, it should work on just about any of them. Because they all have the commonality of the two AC output wires here. And this is a pretty common connector for most of those as well. So, um, I'm thinking this is a pretty good setup for fixing these EL clusters, which has been a notorious problem. There's uh, not a big demand for the uh, Chryslers because most of those are in the junkyard now, but but if you do have one of those, then I would say this is uh, probably an avenue that you could research and maybe find a solution for your problem at least. I yep. say it's $23, I mean. Well, they're even twenty-three dollars or nineteen dollars plus your shipping. I, shipping was like another sixteen dollars, something like that, to get it shipped here. So you're in it for thirty-six, and if you're DIY in it, you know that's basically all you you got into it. A little shrink wrap. So I'm not really good at the math here, but that beats the two hundred and fifty that uh, that's going to save you. What is it? Two hundred and fourteen dollars. On the sending plus all the shipping back and forth to the guy on eBay and um, and if you were faced with replacing it then you're gonna save a whole hell of a lot more than that at least six hundred and mm-hmm something crazy 620 624 something like that yeah that is at a minimum and if that guy sells his cluster the next one up was eight hundred dollars so mm -hmm. So I hope you all can see the cost savings in this. And I have earned a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe. Be much appreciated. Right on. A little more drying time. Okay, guys, we got it all wired up. And we're going to check our fix on this. And it's a little precariously placed, but uh, it's the best I can do for you right now. For preliminary but there you can see the lighting is working and for a little while I didn't think it was because you can't tell it's working with the lights on so hang on a second let me get this straight so I didn't think it was working so I had it plugged up and I was checking these uh, pins on this connector here and this pin on the which corresponds to the black wire on the uh, on the pigtail that plugs in there. This one is the, on the uh, on this side here, right here. You trace it back around, goes back and forth through vias and etc. It comes back around to the bottom of your your uh, lights here. So it appears to be a ground, but it also ties in over here on the bottom of these resistors and um, that's about the extent of that I don't know if you need to know that information or not but uh, if that helps you out any it does appear to be the ground wire um, our little securing here appears to work functional fine it's uh, secure enough in there we can get it all put back together now so Let's get our piece here. You're going to want to fish your wire through this hole. Uh, let's just do, tilt the camera up a little bit here so we can see what we can see what we're doing here. Going to fish our wire through that hole, and you're going to fish your odometer wire. Oops, we want to show you that too, though. 
doesn't matter for this part because that's just going to go to the connector. Yeah, okay. you fish the wire? Yeah. So you got both wires fished through the back holes. Oh, wrong, wrong hole. Oh, we went the wrong hole? Well, you took it back out and then... <laughs> well, usually there's a little more indication you're in the wrong hole. <laughs> hey. a, little, a little yelp? A little yelp? Uh, hey, YouTube friendly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. As you get that back in there, it just wants to fall out all the time, but you're going to have to basically have three hands to get it all back together properly. And yeah. you don't want to forget your plunger. Your plunger. This At this point. On. Make sure you have your little gray little piece there. On yep. It. And... We're going to set that aside for right now. So I'm going to show you all a little additional content here. Hope you stay tuned until the end. If you have an odometer display problem, we're going to go ahead and prophylactically fix that or proactively fix that. Because it's prophylactic, a, it's probably not. Yeah, I mean, my, my mind is obviously in the gutter. <laughs> all right. So these pins here, oh shit, bad camera angle. These pins here, you will want to reflow the solder on those. That's where that uh, brownish connector hooks up on the other side of the board here. These through, through holes tend to crack and that will cause your odometer display to go out. It's very common. This is common on the regular Ford F-150s as well. It's basically the same board with the exception of the... the uh, oh, we also need this one. Hmm? Make sure that that's a good flow. Mm -hmm. it looks like somebody's already been in here and tried to... Well, yeah, I mean, someone was clearly in here from the hot glue. Yeah, let's see. Your solder suckers are out. I'm just going to... It's not normally necessary to remove the solder, the old solder. You're just kind of adding to it and reflowing it. The new solder, it has a little bit more lead in it. So it makes your connection, they, you know, OSHA wants to eliminate all the lead out of everything, which is probably a good thing for health standards, but it creates a more brittle solder. So if you use a lead, you know, a 10% lead, something like that. Yeah. I can't remember the exact explains all my lead amount of lead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it explains why we're a little dumb. Hey, at least we're not Cowboys fans. <laughs> now you're going to get everybody hating on us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. But speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of which, the Cowboys, I heard a deal the other day. They got $94 million wrapped up in three players. Oh, yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, it's not the brightest. <sighs> okay. So once you get all that done, you're going to, again, have to fish wires through this one's just going to go on the bottom. Uh, we're still having a problem with camera angles. All right. So you want to hold your cluster about like this so you can hold the front face on. You want to fish the wire through the hole for the uh, EO lighting. Line everything up. And push the pogo pins from the gauges back through the holes in the clusters, the receptacles. Yeah, make sure that these pins right. get a good connection. That's pretty Now important. that they're in there with those pressure fittings on the gauges, it'll usually hold itself up pretty good. And then you're going to want to connect your EL lighting connector and your odometer. All right. Put back 
on with your back housing here. I used to be a Cowboys fan. Uh, the 80s were a long time ago. It was a long time ago. What has it been? 23 years now since they had a playoff win. Well, they had a playoff win this year. 23 years since they won the Super Bowl. I wasn't even a cognizant human being at that point. Okay, that's all of them. I went to a Cowboys game once back when I was in. Uh, back when they were in, uh, what was that, Texas Stadium? Drove yeah. for four hours from San Antonio to get to Texas Stadium. Bought the tickets here, didn't know what I was doing. Parked about four miles from the stadium, had to walk and hike in basically in 110 degree weather. Finally got inside the stadium, said I'm gonna go get a beer. My girlfriend said, nope, you're not going to get a beer. I said, oh, hell yeah, I am. And um, I proceeded to come back with two Dr. Peppers because Cowboys Stadium was in a dry county. <laughs> That's truly unfortunate. Then I sat down to watch the game. And the Cowboys would do something great. And everybody around me had the, the old little golf clap going on. I was like, oh, okay. It's not what I expected from an NFL game. I do believe they're getting a little more rowdy these days, but... Next week, I went to a Houston Oilers game. Drove for two hours. Parked right next to the front door. And... Um, Walked in, sat down in air conditioned. It was in the Astrodome at the time. That's how old I am. Well, Houston Oilers gave that part away too, but yes. But uh, nonetheless, sat down, and the man is walking up and down the aisle yelling, cold beer. <laughs> That's a plus. <laughs> and then uh, the Oilers would do something good. Man, the fans were rowdy and they were mean and they were nasty and I loved every bit of it. And then uh, I got a closed circuit TV, you know, right up there next to me. See the old replays and I got air conditioner blowing right there at me too. And I was like, hell yeah, this is my team. And I've stuck with them ever since. Until they moved to Tennessee. <laughs> and I stuck with them after Tennessee for a while and then the uh, Texans started up, and so I was a Texans fan. Anyhow, because those are my people. Not that I love the city of Houston, but I do love the football there. So here we go. We're going to have to shut down the lights again. Show y'all that we got this done. Lights. Right. Get our camera angle. Da -da -da -da. Let me shut off these lights. This stuff you will not see it if you try to power it up in the middle of the day in a brightly lit room. But there you can see we have a working instrument cluster with, uh, and that is typical for them when you power them up on the bench to just see the dashes there on the odometer. That's a standard deal on this doesn't have connection to the car so yep. it's smart enough to know that somehow go ahead and kill it it's like the uh, security information and, the, uh, and I got one more little piece of bonus content for y'all if you would like to hook this thing up on the bench it has a uh, 22 pin connector as well as a 20 pin, 20 pin connector and hooking it up on the bench, you're going to want to have pin two on the 20 pin connector, pin two, pin 10, 
and pin 11 all go to power. Alright. You're going to have a ground on pin 1. It's all on the pin, uh, 20 pin connector. The 22 pin connector, you're going to have a ground at pin 17. And you're going to want to put power to pin 22. And pin 22 directly lights up that uh, EL circuit or the dash lighting in a normal F-150. So hope this content helps you out. I hope you uh, like and subscribe. We appreciate that if you do. And it helps us out a lot. And I'll uh, see you all on the next one. Bye, y'all. Okay, also, we needed to give a little credit to Mr. Martinez. He's the one who did all the work on this, uh, uh, the research on this to find the repair for this, find the part for this. And um, we appreciate him and his working with us on this. And uh, uh, he found this on the internet, so we, we can't ascertain who on the internet should deserve a little credit but uh if it was you thanks helped us out and i hope we helped y'all out and see y'all next time